Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 worst zombie movies. For this list, we'll be looking at the silliest and most critically maligned zombie films ever made. Have you seen any of these? If so, what did you think? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. Night of the Living Dead 3D The 1990 remake of George A. Romero's legendary classic was surprisingly enjoyable. This is a travesty. We better go find the office and see what's up. Will you wait a minute? No, I won't, Barb. I'm starting to get pissed off here. Romero's original has long fallen into the public domain owing to a critical copywriting mistake, meaning anyone can show or recreate the film without legal penalty. Unfortunately, that has resulted in director Jeff Broadstreet's Night of the Living Dead 3D. The movie is a resounding failure on every level, featuring high school theater grade performances, cheap production values, and a lack of the political undertones that made the original such an intelligent classic. Even the 3D effects stink, and that's the chief draw of the movie. Put simply, it's an injustice to Romero's legacy. In what up until now is a pretty peaceful world. Oh, Jesus, just give me one. You know how to use it? Are you joking? I grew up on video games. Number 19. Zombie Fight Club We mean, do you really expect masterful cinema from a movie called Zombie Fight Club? No, but the premise could make for an entertaining B-movie. This isn't that. <laughs> Zombie Fight Club is a Taiwanese film released back in 2014, and it concerns human survivors battling against zombies in an elaborate gladiatorial arena. However, that's a very basic description of the storyline. In truth, Zombie Fight Club is a mess of a movie with no true direction, mixing tones and disparate genres like zombie horror and martial arts action. This could have proven a unique combination under the right director, but instead, it's just a nonsensical mess with lots of CGI blood and gore that is entirely unconvincing. Number 18. Rec 3 Genesis The Rec series bears a lot of similarities to Resident Evil. Both start off well enough, but they quickly dissolve into utter nonsense that betrays the character of the original. The first, Rec, is a modern horror classic, and the second was a decent enough follow-up. And then came Rec 3. Primer piso, pasillo a la izquierda. Ah, ya está. This film is nothing like the first two, and not in a good way, switching the genre from horror to action, the tone from serious to comical, and doing away with the found footage concept. It also serves as an unwelcome divergence in the series chronologically, as Manuela Velasco's Angela is entirely absent. This is not Wreck, this is a tongue-in-cheek horror comedy under the Wreck brand, and fans would do well to stay clear. Es demasiado pronto. ¿Cómo? Aún no. No puede estar pasando. ¿El qué? El Génesis. Number 17. Automaton Transfusion. The concept behind Automaton Transfusion is actually pretty interesting, and it carries some potential as a B-movie. In the midst of the Vietnam War, a dejected United States Army attempts to revive the recently dead to use as soldiers. I'm sorry, Chris. Your father was my friend. Think about never having to send our own boys into battle ever again. We could use the dead to fight for us. The experiments failed, but they were tried again in the early 2000s. Unsurprisingly, the tests began to go horribly wrong, and zombies are unleashed in Grover City. Unfortunately, the movie can't overcome its amateurish production values. It's very obvious the film was shot for pennies with inexperienced filmmakers complete with horrible performances and glaring continuity errors. Watching Automaton Transfusion is paramount to watching someone's home movie that was shot on a camcorder. We have to make it to the school. We can hide out there and wait for help. If help even exists. Number 16. Zombie Apocalypse Yes, this movie is just as lame as its title. A sci-fi original, Zombie Apocalypse follows a band of survivors attempting to reach zombie-free sanctuary in Catalina. We were headed through the city of the ferry when we hit a massive pack of the dead. 
Yeah, we just calm zombies. What ferry? Catalina sends a ferry every few weeks to pick up survivors. At least that's what we heard. Despite its derivative storyline, Zombie Apocalypse actually contains a decent cast, including Ving Rhames and Orange is the New Black's Taryn Manning. But despite their strong efforts and commanding screen charisma, this is about the blandest zombie movie imaginable. From the unimaginative title to the generic storyline, Zombie Apocalypse adds nothing new to the genre and features some cheap special effects that won't be convincing to anyone. It's a schlocky made-for-TV movie and nothing more. Damn it! What? God, I lost my brush. Number 15. The Dead Don't Die This zombie comedy was probably one of the biggest disappointments of the 2010s. It was directed by Jim Jarmusch, a prominent figure in independent cinema, and it featured an incredible cast containing the likes of Bill Murray, Adam Driver, Tilda Swinton, Danny Glover, and Steve Buscemi. By all accounts, this could have been the next Shaun of the Dead. Uh, what, what the hell was it? A wild animal? Of several wild animals? I don't know. But whatever it was, it even smashed the coffee pots. And while it certainly isn't an affront to filmmaking, it is immeasurably disappointing. The movie is entirely kept afloat by the strong cast. Aside from their presence, there's very little to recommend here. The movie is not only completely aimless, but it's neither funny nor scary. Let's just say there's a reason The Dead Don't Die was ignored despite the marquee names. He said, I heard you had a lot of zombies around here, and then they laughed. Hey, Inferno. Hipsters with their irony. Number 14. The Quick and the Undead Western horror is a unique genre combination that is woefully underutilized. Unfortunately, The Quick and the Undead does absolutely nothing to generate interest for more movies of its kind. Every hunter has rules. Kill the fresh ones first. The story takes place in the western United States, which has been decimated and left barren by a devastating zombie plague. Bounty hunters hired by the American government hunt zombies and prove humanity's last hope. Despite some fun references to classic western films and some decent low-budget cinematography, The Quick and the Undead is worth staying dead. It's a cheap movie filled with bad acting and unconvincing production values, including some abysmal sound design. And the most important rule of all, never let them lure you inside. Number 13. Oasis of the Zombies The late 70s and early 80s were the golden age of zombie films, complete with the greatest and most commercially successful output from George A. Romero. And to think Oasis of the Zombies was plopped right in the middle of it. Seulement, je ne crois pas aux légendes, mais si elles sont vraies, j'espère que mes hommes continueront à m'obéir. Unfortunately, this movie is less a welcoming oasis than a misleading mirage. It borrows many aspects from popular movies of the time, including zombies and a Nazi-themed treasure hunt a la Raiders of the Lost Ark. Watching it only reaffirms how talented the makers of those movies are. Oasis of the Zombies is a poorly made mess with few redeeming qualities and hopes of nothing more than cashing in on a craze. Le 15 novembre 1943, un commando portant 6 milliards or dans ses camions est parti en direction du port de la Guate. Number 12. Teenage Zombies Just as the 70s and 80s were the golden age of zombie movies, the 50s was the golden age of B-movies. You know, Maury, I've never been out there, but I understand those waters can be treacherous at times. I think the wisest thing for you to do is go see the sheriff. You'll know what to do. Many classics, or not-so-classics, were made throughout this period, including the magnificently misunderstood films of Ed Wood. And while Teenage Zombies was going for that same sort of aesthetic and tone, it's missing some type of vital ingredient. It's not enjoyably bad like most of Wood's films. Just bad. No amount of alcohol will make this movie any funnier. Many people involved in the production have admitted its horrible qualities, including actor Chuck Niles, who has called the film terrible. It's not surprising given the movie's absolutely abysmal acting and atrocious visual effects. This group was the largest menace to United States security we've ever had. Wow. Hey, you think maybe we'll get a medal, huh? Number 11. The incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed-up zombies. 
Reportedly produced for just $38,000, this movie is often regarded as one of the worst ever made. And that's saying something, considering the silly movies so far found on this list. The world's here to be enjoyed, not to make you depressed. That's what work does, Harold. It makes you feel depressed. The film is actually quite notable for its interesting cinematography and creative use of color. This is because the movie was co-shot by Vilmos Zygmunt, who would later work on Close Encounters of the Third Kind and win an Academy Award. But even the movie's nice visual qualities cannot save it from the atrocious acting and dialogue. This is the very definition of an incompletely made film, as virtually all aspects of its production, bar maybe the visuals, are amateurish in nature. No, no, I haven't been drinking. Everything's been kind of mixed up, but after hearing that news broadcast a little while ago, I'm beginning to think things are a little different. Number 10. Resident Evil Afterlife It's amazing how far the Resident Evil series fell. While certainly not masterpieces, the first three movies were generally enjoyed by fans of the video games. And then came Afterlife, which heralded the downfall of the franchise. Well, isn't this one big family reunion? Chris and Claire Redfield, you've really become quite an inconvenience for me. Not only was the storyline drastically diverging from the video games and growing increasingly confusing, but the production values were getting worse and worse. The visual effects and acting found throughout Afterlife are truly embarrassing including a grossly miscast Albert Wesker that saw Sean Roberts doing his best Agent Smith impression. While the Resident Evil movies were never critical darlings, Afterlife impressed no one. Nice landing. Number 9. Nazis at the Center of the Earth We're not sure if the premise behind this movie is brilliant or brilliantly stupid. Researchers working in Antarctica are kidnapped by Nazis and taken to the center of the earth where they discover a still-living Josef Mengele. They then uncover Mengele's plot to begin a Fourth Reich using Nazi zombies. It could certainly make for a fun movie enjoyed by a group of inebriated friends, and the inclusion of Jake Busey lends it a degree of authenticity. It's obviously not to be taken seriously, but Nazis at the Center of the Earth is nevertheless a poorly made and uninteresting film. There are good Nazi ploitation films out there that mix goofy fun with professional filmmaking, including 2018's Overlord. Nazis is just incompetent and, worst of all, boring. Mengele died in the 70s. That's right. Unicamp exhumed his skull in Brazil. They confirmed it with his DNA. Number 8. Zombie Nightmare we didn't think you could go wrong with Adam West, but Zombie Nightmare proved us wrong. Are you telling me in your quaint way, Frank, that we don't have any leads? Uh, yeah. This movie was a disaster from the beginning and suffered an onslaught of production issues. Firstly, the movie is steeped in racism. John Fasano wrote the movie with black actors in mind, but investors asked him to make them white in order to secure a wider audience. Secondly, the movie proved a nightmare to make. The production crew thought Fasano was an assistant director and refused to listen to his directions, resulting in a mess of a movie without any sort of cohesion. The lack of direction is plainly evident, and aside from the admittedly great heavy metal soundtrack, there is absolutely nothing to enjoy here. Louise, you must understand what I do. I cannot bring life back to you, boy. Number 7. Zombie Night A weird concoction that mixes zombie and vampire tropes, Zombie Night is a cheap film coming out of Ontario. That was my new job. I should be able to take as much time off as I want. It wouldn't come out here every weekend. That would be nice. Honey, your hair's getting so gray. The boring and derivative story takes place in a post-apocalyptic world ravaged by World War III. The war has not only decimated the planet's population, but the chemicals used throughout have turned the dead into zombies that only come out at night. The film is not only poorly and cheaply made, but it's filled with countless genre cliches. Zombie Night is good for nothing more than playing zombie movie bingo and appreciating the work and talent that goes into legitimately good genre films. I have to agree with Mark. Besides, it's too late to leave now. 
We got plenty of food and water right here. Number six, Killing Birds. This movie is such a mess that no one even knows who directed it. Abbiamo trovato Jennifer morta. Cosa? Qualcuno l'ha uccisa. Oh mio Dio. Dobbiamo andarcene al più presto. Chiunque ha ucciso Jennifer può uccidere anche noi. Most of the credit is given to Aristide Masacesi, who also produced and shot the movie under a pseudonym. However, the credited director is a newcomer named Claudio Latanzi, who was allegedly given credit by Masacesi himself. It doesn't really matter, but it speaks to the chaotic nature of the movie. Nothing about the film works or comes together to form a cohesive whole. The storyline is bewildering, and it's not helped by a horrible script filled with laughable dialogue and stupid characters. Add in some dreadful acting, and you've got the recipe for a boring and incompletely made zombie film. Vuoi dire anime dannate che non trovano pace? No, non esistono certe cose. Ah no, chiedilo Jennifer o me! Number 5. Gangs of the Dead it should be illegal to call a zombie movie X of the Dead, as it only brings to mind much better and more entertaining zombie movies that were made by a talented director. One Adam 12, we're at Washington and Soto. We have officers down, repeat officers down. Hello, is anybody out there? But that isn't the movie's only sin. In the United Kingdom, it was released under the title 48 Weeks Later to attract fans of 28 Days Later. The movie's shady attempt to capitalize on popular zombie movies clearly didn't work, as no one remembers Gangs of the Dead, and for good reason. The movie is both horribly made and offensive, filled with abounding racial stereotypes regarding Los Angeles gang culture and its respective participants. Despite a unique premise, Gangs of the Dead squanders all of its potential. Yeah, I think this is it. What are we doing? This is what? We need to get those things out of the room. And how the hell are we gonna do that? Number four. Return of the Living Dead – Rave to the Grave The first Return of the Living Dead is one of the all-time classic zombie comedies, earning critical acclaim for its humor and distinctive punk soundtrack. As one could probably surmise from its title, Rave to the Grave does a great disservice to its legacy. The fifth installment in the series, this one sees a college student inadvertently creating zombies at a rave by distributing zombie pills. It's all just so silly, and not in that fun B-movie type of way. It's even worse than most sci-fi channel products, filled with incompetent filmmaking, a script plagued by head-shaking dialogue, and plot holes, and some of the worst zombie effects ever put to screen. Hey man, you wanna jam with us? Help me! Help me! They're after me! Who's after you, bro? Them! Number 3. Zombie Strippers Respect must be given to filmmaker Jay Lee. He conducted virtually all aspects of the production, including directing, writing, shooting, and editing, and even managed to get Freddy Krueger himself, Robert England, in the main role. You've always just stood back and watched and rolled your eyes. Yeah, well, this is different. It's evil. Unfortunately, England couldn't save the movie from itself. The film is intentionally campy and shares many similarities with Grindhouse, including a poster bearing a similar retro style. But whereas Grindhouse was made by professionals and experienced directors, Zombie Strippers utterly collapses from poor execution. It doesn't have the intelligence or filmmaking prowess to rise above mere schlock and it falls prey to the same things it's trying to poke fun at. The whole flesh-eating corpse zombie super stripper thing. Excuse me? Number 2. Redneck Zombies Released in 1987, Redneck Zombies was one of the first movies released straight to video. That's about the only interesting thing about it. I think that splotch is the tobacco stain. That old man dribbled like a Harlem Globetrotter. Hell, he was missing so many teeth, it looked like Mr. T did a workout on his face. The story involves the titular rednecks who make alcohol laced with radioactive waste, turning its drinkers into zombies. These zombies then torment a group of city tourists who get lost in the woods while on vacation. Like many films on this list, Redneck Zombies aims to be nothing more than B-movie camp, but completely fails in its execution. Unlike the best intentional schlock, the movie isn't funny and doesn't seem to have a loving adoration of the genre in question. It's just cheap and boring. Oh man, this is too weird. You guys do what you want to do. 
I'm going over here and I'm going to freak out. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. House of the Dead This film has a double whammy of awful that should scare away all prospective viewers. Doesn't this bother any of you? Ah. We're on the island where the rave of the year is supposed to be happening, but it's completely deserted. Not only is it based on a video game, which is almost never a good sign, but it was directed by the infamous Uva Boll. House of the Dead was his first video game movie adaptation, and it instantly made Boll one of the most feared names in the industry. The movie was critically maligned by everyone, with nearly all aspects of the production being criticized to some degree. It's just one of those nightmares of a movie in which absolutely nothing works. It's the worst zombie movie ever made, and it should be studied by all aspiring filmmakers so we don't get anything like it again. What the hell was that thing? Our best friend. Not anymore. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.